Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on the channel. I'm Adam Ferns and this is my top 10 favourite water beasts from Beast Quest. Uh, the beasts here um, are basically beasts that have been fought in the water in any realm, whether it's a special book or a regular book. They've all been fought in water by Tom and Lena. Uh, I will say though there is one technically that's an exception, but because he this beast is a water beast, I decided that I will add it in, instead of add it to the next list. Because <coughs> this beast can also fly. So moving on. So before we get into this, this is my opinion. So please feel free to see if your top ten, top five, even top three down in the comments below. I'll read them and um, I won't agree to them but uh, I will not say your opinion is wrong because it doesn't have this as number one so yeah let's get into this number 10 we have S Solak Scourge of the Sea now this beast is actually the worst of series 12 but it doesn't mean it's a bad beast because even though its design is basically a giant shark with spikes and bone fins and all that and sharp teeth basically looking intimidating it looks it actually looks good in my opinion um i don't think we've seen another shark beast before any well i don't think we've seen a shark beast before i don't think we've seen a shark beast after and we haven't actually um and this is what makes it so unique because we haven't seen a beast like it before or ever since um so i think so like needs more um respects maybe because it is a unique concept unfortunately i do need to say his fight was a bit boring compared to his other attributes being design and abilities moving on to number nine we have the most infamous one sepron the sea serpent now i said it before i say it again i like its seaweed hair and i like it looks like it's smiling yeah that's what I need to say. It was um, the first water beast that Tom went against, and um, the fight was better than Furnos as it was longer, but the abilities and design, well, the design I think was the same as Furno, but the abilities were not. Um, either way, I know Sephiroth got a higher score than Furno in that ranking, actually, in that beast of you, um, which I probably might need to. Which probably is different now that it's a whole year or so later. But um, it doesn't change the fact that Sephiroth is still a great beast and uh, is very loved throughout the entire from everyone. Um, it's my fourth favourite from series one, and I think probably going to be my third favourite soon. I'm not sure. Sorry about that. My dog's barking. Don't know what for. Let's go into number eight Spike Finn, the Water King. Um, like I said with Koron in the last video, it's basically a walking death machine, but this time it swims because every part of it is sharp. The back of its tail, its fins on its tail, along with the side of its arms, claws, teeth, and um, on its head as well. All of it is incredibly sharp and it is incredibly agile, meaning... Even though it did do that in uh, the Battle of the Beast, it didn't survive. Um, it swam past its opponent. It can swim past its opponent, slashing uh, not deep gashes, but can just cut them briefly. Come back, go for round two, keep doing that, while it's also spin going around them, making them dizzy and confused. Um, so it is a good beast with basically, like I said, a walking death machine. And uh, I think I should have probably sent it to the next round of Battle of the Beasts, round two. But unfortunately, at that time, I saw Naga winning more. So, okay. N um, next on this list, number seven. Uh, yep, number seven is Voltrex, the two-headed octopus. Uh, well, like I said with um, another beast... Uh, oh yeah, well like I said with Solak, it's a unique design. We haven't seen a beast based off an octopus before. Octopus, not a squid, because you've already seen a squid. An octopus, because, um, yes, less than a two-headed octopus. Um, 
in my opinion, is actually really creative. And the fact is, one of the knights of Forton being able to change from knight to the beast is actually pretty incredible, in my opinion. The abilities are a bit... Yeah, okay. But the fight and design is actually pretty good, um, in my opinion. And... Um, Tom, instead of using his sword, using a harpoon to kill it, I think is even better. Uh, moving on, we have in sixth place, Fluga the Sightless Sliverer. Now this this fight was actually interesting because it was Tom and Rhea versus Alina and Dautek versus Fluga, which I thought was actually pretty creative and I wish there was more of. <coughs> But unfortunately, um, unfortunately, the uh, book had to end. So yeah, but the, it had good abilities, great design, by the way, unique, and it wasn't a disappointment like Grimon was. Um, the fight was also good, and it had Dautek get his first kill. Yes, finally, Dautek killed a beast. Um, <coughs> now, okay. Fifth place is here because I like the mythology behind this creature, and this is Plexor the Raging Reptile. Now, if you don't know already, Plexor is based off the Loch Ness Monster, and I, as I said, I like the mythology behind this creature, and um, it'll be great, and it's actually, I like it a lot that there's a beast actually based off it. Unfortunately, its abilities are what you'd expect from it, but it doesn't change the fact that its design and fight were amazing, and I like it. And I said this in the ranking, along with the beast view on it. Just imagine, um, just imagine Rocket Raccoon was there and took Plexor's eye. Just, <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious in my opinion. Um, okay, moving on to fourth place, we have Balisk the Water Snake. This is the exception I was talking about, as it is based off a sea beast, so yeah, okay. But it does have the ability to fly, but that's with its second clone. So I was tempted to add it to both lists, but I decided I'll keep it to one. And if I was to keep it to one, I'd keep it to the one that's related to its title, the Water Snake. Uh, yeah, just making sure. In my opinion, this is actually a really underrated beast, and... Um, Due to my constant defending of it um, from people that message me, go like, Balisk is a bad beast. Um, I just say, okay, maybe bad, but it doesn't change the fact it is the greatest in design aspects compared to others in Series 8. Um, if I was to compare it to the other water beast, in my opinion, it's fourth place, obviously. But it doesn't change the fact that it is still a great beast, in my opinion. Oh, what's number one? Uh, oh, right, okay. Um, it, there's another exception now, I just realised. Third place, we have Naga the Sea Monster. Now, this one's here because it was my favourite in the Beast View. It stayed my favourite in up until, well, my favourite Water Beast um, for ages. But it has moved down, actually, in my opinion. Because, unfortunately for Naga... Um, with the extra beast views that came out since the last ranking, it got moved backwards. And then with another water beast that was in, that came in a few reviews after this one, around uh, before series 10, let's say, um, I moved that one ahead due to how well that one did in Battle of the Beasts. So Naga has moved down. But it doesn't change the fact it's still a great water beast. It had a rather gruesome kill and a rather gruesome death in the book. Um, along with a great side character being Gent. But we've never seen him again, so okay. Moving on to number two, we have Nusefa, the Cursed Siren. Now this one was actually expected to be here because it's the most intimidating beast by far, on design anyway. And um, with its abilities... Being quite a few bits, which I said in my beast review, I can't remember all of them. The main one was the dagger um, hand there, which can, can be used to stab or pierce her victims, which is um, pretty terrifying. Um, the fight, in my opinion, was a bit short, but it didn't change the fact that the abilities and the design were absolutely amazing. 
and I think gave it 26 out of 30. And moving on to number one, this is the extra exception I was talking about. This wasn't fought on water, but it was confirmed in the book that this beast is a water beast. So number one is Crestor the Crushing Terror. Um, I know what some of you are going to say, it was not fought on water, meaning you shouldn't have it on the list. Okay, but it, um, like, there's so many things that can say, okay, this beast is a water beast, technically. Um, webbed claws, and, um, it says something about it having gills, which meaning it can breathe underwater, and it can breathe above water, clearly. Um, I actually like it, along with the great abilities and the great fights it had, along with the high design score it got. I think it got an 8 for design, actually. Which, um, compared to others, is actually a good score. Uh, like, um, it's like the average score, I think, because I gave so many beasts an 8 out of 10 for design. Um, Crestor, in my opinion, is one of the best designs, and if I got to redo the design scores, I probably would give Crestor a higher one, or, uh, keep it the same, I'm not sure. If there was one design score on these beasts I will change, it'll probably be Naga. Um, I'm not going to say if it's higher or lower though, but I said I'll change it. Anyway, that's all for this time. That's all for my ranking. Um, uh, Crestor is my favourite water beast. Um, doing really well in Battle of the Beast, so more respect there. And that is all for this time. If you like what you saw, leave a like, leave a comment, don't forget to subscribe, press that notification bell down in below. Join me in the next video, which are my top 10 favourite flying beasts. And I'll see you next time.